Spill-proof gasoline containers seem like they're very good at making spills. So the question is, is a $25 gas can just as good as the one that cost $140? Let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which fuel can offers the best flow. We'll see which cans stay upright the best. Then we'll test the durability of the fuel cans using the Farm of Vago. We'll test the failure load of the cans. Finally, we'll test the corrosion resistance of the metal cans. At a price of $25, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is the Briggs & Stratton Garage Boss. All the gas cans we'll be testing are approximately five gallons or very close to 19 liters. Just under the pour spout, the Garage Boss has a flame mitigation device. Ergonomically friendly design makes fueling your equipment easy and clean. The spout is designed to prevent unnecessary spills. Control gasoline flow with a simple press of a button. To get the gasoline flowing, you have to push forward and press down. The Briggs & Stratton Garage Boss is made in USA. The Briggs & Stratton Garage Boss weighs 2.6 pounds. One of the most important features of a 5-gallon fuel container is fuel flow. If you're holding a can in an awkward position, you'll want the fuel to flow as quickly as possible. I've added some food coloring to the water to make it easier to see. I just added 5 gallons of water to the Garage Boss. Let's see if the Garage Boss leaks when it's tipped over on its side. No leaks from the Garage Boss. I put together a stand which includes a filler neck from a fuel tank. So let's see how long it takes to completely empty the container. And the Garage Boss did a great job for 7 seconds when the water flow really slowed down. There's a small amount of water on the test stand, but that's more my fault than the gas cans. And the Garage Boss is finally finished after 3 minutes and 2 seconds to drain most of the 5 gallons. Unfortunately, there's still a few ounces trapped inside the tank since the flame mitigation device is getting in the way. At a price of $25, the same price as the Garage Boss is this Scepter brand. Fast and hassle-free experience. It has a simple spout and flame mitigation device. Flows fast up to 3 gallons per minute. To remove the spout, press down on the green tab and twist counterclockwise. To get the gasoline flowing, place fingers over the grip and use palm to push the dark green tab in to unlock the spout. You have to keep the tab depressed in order to keep the fuel flowing. The Scepter is made in USA. The Scepter weighs just about the same as the Garage Boss at 2.6 pounds. No problems with leak from the Scepter. And the Scepter started off great, but it slowed down just a little after several seconds. And the Scepter seems to be venting better than the Garage Boss and is making much better progress. And the Scepter is over a minute faster than the Garage Boss at a minute and 55 seconds. Just like the Garage Boss, the flame mitigation hardware is trapping a few ounces inside the tank. At a price of $28 is this Briggs & Stratton with the Smart Fill Fuel Filling System. Plastic blow molded gas can. Just like the first two brands, the Briggs & Stratton has a flame mitigation device. It claims to have a spill-proof system featuring an easy operation auto shutoff spout. To get the gas flowing, you have to turn the green collar a quarter inch to the right until it locks into place. The Briggs & Stratton is made in USA. The Briggs & Stratton weighs 2.7 pounds. No leaks with the Briggs & Stratton. And the Briggs & Stratton is off to a great start, but it slowed down a lot after about 5 seconds. Just like the Garage Boss, the Briggs & Stratton just isn't ventilating very well. And the Briggs & Stratton is 50 seconds slower than the Scepter at 2 minutes and 45 seconds. I must have placed just a little bit too much pressure on the press and pour spout, and it did leak a small amount onto the test stand. At a price of $29 is this Midwest brand, designed with two handles for easy use and handling. Lower center of gravity to reduce the chance of can tipping over. To get the fuel flowing, you have to click to unlock. Rest notch on tank tip and push downward to retract the spout. Each time the spout returns to the home position, you have to unlock it. The Midwest can is made in USA. The Midwest can weighs 3.2 pounds. No leaks with the Midwest can. And the Midwest can is off to a really slow start. With the fuel container tilted nose down, the fuel can just isn't venting very well. And the Midwest is only 5 seconds faster than the Briggs & Stratton to move into second place after 2 minutes and 40 seconds. I did cause a little bit of water to spill on top of the test stand. No leaks and there's almost no water trapped inside the Midwest fuel can, by far the best yet. At a price of $39 is this Scepter Military Style Gas Can. Military Style Profile carries a smaller footprint, making it easier to store in small spaces. Made from durable high-density polyethylene, rust-proof and non-corrosive. To remove the nozzle, you have to push the tab down and unscrew the cap to vent. To get the gas flowing, press to unlock, you'll hear a click. Rest the hook on the edge of the tank. Push can down to pour. The Scepter is made in Canada. The Scepter is the heaviest yet at 3.9 pounds. And there's no leaks with the Scepter Military Style Fuel Container. And the Scepter started off with a very nice flow but the self-venting spout isn't venting very well. And the tall narrow profile of the Scepter is really hurting the performance. 3 minutes and 30 seconds is the slowest yet. And there's no fuel spillage with the Scepter, and the Scepter has done the best job yet at completely draining. There seems to be less than an ounce of fuel trapped inside the can. At a price of $42 is this no spill brand. Having a handle on top as well as the back of the can really helps a lot. Flows fast up to 3 gallons per minute. Not intended for refueling on-road motor vehicles. To get the gas flowing, you place the spout in the target tank. Press the green button to start the flow. Fuel stops when you release the green button or when the can is out of fuel. The no spill brand is made in USA. The no spill weighs 3.1 pounds. And there's no leaks with the no spill fuel can. And the no spill fuel can started off with a pretty decent flow rate, but the ventilation slowed the fuel flow after a few seconds. The no spill 
Fuel Fuel can and nozzle are working together to drain the fuel faster than most of the other brands. Two minutes and five seconds to move into second place behind the scepter. And there is a small amount of fuel that did spill out from the base of the fuel spout. After removing the fuel spout, I was able to completely drain the gas can. The no spill uses a great design with the neck parallel with the fuel can, which allows the fuel to completely drain. At a price of $45 is this VP Racing Can. Includes a 14-inch hose kit with no special features to get the gas flowing. Pours quickly and easily thanks to a contoured handle, bottom grip, and non-breakable multi-purpose cap. The VP Racing Fuel Can is not ASTM or EPA approved, so it's only designed for racing fuels. The VP Racing Can is made in USA. VP Racing weighs 3.7 pounds. No leaks with the VP Racing fuel can. I was able to get the flow started without a leak from the nozzle, but I opened the vent too far and it started leaking. I reduced the amount of ventilation on the VP Racing can and that helped quite a bit. And the VP Racing is the fastest yet at a minute and 53 seconds. The VP Racing did the best so far, leaving less than an ounce of water inside the can and it's now completely drained with no water slushing around in the container. The biggest issue seems to be that the fuel vent is located a little too close to the fuel spout. So it's probably going to leak a little bit if you're going full tilt with the full can of fuel. Also the price of $45, the same price as the VP Racing fuels, is this Midwest can which is sold at Harbor Freight. Includes a flame shield safety system. The Midwest can is the first of four cans that are made of metal. Before use, place on a flat surface and click the red safety lock. This unlocks the spout so you can use it. Place the tip of the spout inside tank, rest notch on tank tip, push downward to retract the spout. And the Midwest can that's sold at Harbor Freight seems very well constructed with a solid weld attaching the handle to the can. The entire seam connecting the two halves of the can is also welded. The Midwest can is made in Latvia. And the Midwest can is by far the heaviest yet at 8.9 pounds. No leaks or spills with the Midwest can. And the Harbor Freight Midwest can started off well, but ventilation became a problem pretty quickly. Just like the plastic style military can, the metal Midwest needed very close to the same amount of time at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. No leaks or spills with the Midwest. And the fuel can just didn't drain quite as well as some of the other fuel cans. After removing the nozzle, I was able to get the rest of the fuel out. At a price of $53 is this Stark Jerry can. Perfect for rugged off-road use. No extra charge for the dent. Fully anti-corrosive coated paint inside and out. Instead of a solid weld, the Stark includes several spot welds. Some of the welds are unpainted. Self-locking lid and anti-leak protection. No special buttons to push or any clicking with plastic parts, just pour and go. And the Stark Military can weighs 8.7 pounds. No leaks or spills with the Stark can. And it's pretty easy to cause a little bit of fuel spillage when going full tilt with a full can of fuel that has nothing holding it back. After several seconds, the water flow slowed down quite a bit. And the Stark experienced significant ventilation issues just like both of the other military style cans. Three minutes and five seconds with the Stark. And the can did do a great job of draining the rest of the water from the can. At a price of $59 is this Eagle brand, constructed of 24 gauge hot dipped galvanized steel. Baked on powder coat finish. Double interlock, no weld bottom seam. Spring closing lid for filling and pouring. 100% leak tested. Has a flame arrestor screen. To install the funnel, you pull back on the yellow handle and slide the funnel under the lid and then release the handle. There's nothing to press or click to get the fuel flowing. The Eagle brand is made in USA. The Eagle fuel can weighs 5.4 pounds. No fuel leaks or spills with the Eagle can. And the Eagle can is definitely unloading the fuel faster than the other brands. Not having a restricted fuel spout makes a huge difference. And the Eagle can finished just after a minute and a half, which is the fastest yet. Just a couple of drifts, but that's probably more my fault. And there's a small amount of water that's trapped in the can. At a price of $63, is this Sure Can brand? Includes hand grips on the bottom that helps you support the weight easier. Thumb trigger release on the top controls the flow. To get the gasoline flowing, vent the fuel can by slowly loosening the large fill cap and then retighten. Remove the spout cap. Rotate the spout into the fuel tank you are filling. To dispense fuel, pull back on thumb safety trigger and depress fully. To stop dispensing fuel, release the thumb trigger. The Sure Can is made in USA. The Sure Can weighs 3.9 pounds. No leaks or spills from the Sure Can. Being able to rest the fuel can on top of the test stand is pretty nice. And the Sure Can is off to a pretty good start. The size of the fuel spout seems to be holding back the Sure Can. Two minutes and 45 seconds is a little bit longer than average, but not bad if you're able to rest the fuel can on something while refueling. No leaks or spills. And the Sure Can still had a few ounces left in it, but no issues completely draining the fuel can. At a price of $104, is this Just Right brand? To put the gas can in service, there's a small amount of assembly required. It includes a one inch hose for quick refueling. Just put the gasket in place and install the two screws. To get the gasoline flowing, you simply squeeze the handle. To fill the gas can with fuel, you simply lift up on the gas can lid. The Just Right brand is made in USA. The Just Right weighs 8.4 pounds. No leaks or spills from the Just Right. And the Just Right fuel can with the one inch spout is making a lot better progress than most of the other brands. No issues with ventilation after several seconds. And the Just Right finish in a minute and 56 seconds. No leaks or spills for the Just Right, but there's a small amount of water trapped inside the can. 
At a price of $140, the most expensive brand we'll be testing is the Wavian NATO fuel can. Just like the Harbor Freight's Midwest can, the Wavian is very well constructed with a solid weld attaching the handle to the can. The entire seam connecting the two halves of the can is also welded. The Wavian safety spout is developed for a fast, non-spill pour. There's a small amount of assembly required to fasten the spout holder to the fuel can. With the Wavian, there's nothing to push or click, just pour and go. There's no information on the fuel can regarding where it's manufactured. And the Wavian's by far the heaviest yet at 10 pounds. No leaks or spills from the Wavian. And I did do the best job of getting the Wavian started and made quite a bit of a mess. However, the Wavian's by far the best ventilated can, draining the entire contents in only 87 seconds. Very impressive. No leaks with the Wavian, but there's quite a bit of spillage. And the Wavian did a great job of completely draining the contents of the tank. If fuel can weight is a factor in your purchasing decision, the plastic cans are substantially lighter than the metal cans. The Scepter is the lightest at 2.6 pounds, and the Wavian is about 7.5 pounds heavier at 10 pounds. For large fuel containers, a fast flow rate saves time and prevents user fatigue. The Wavian is the fastest at 87 seconds, but the Eagle is almost as fast at 90. VP Racing did well at 113 seconds, Scepter 115, and Just Right 116 seconds. If you ever get a little bit of water or dirt trapped in a gas can, it's nearly impossible to remove if the last ounce or two of liquid stay trapped inside the can. Fuel can design as well as flame mitigation hardware prevented the fuel from completely draining from some of the brands, but about half the brands received the best possible rating of one. Assessing leaks or spills is somewhat subjective and has a lot to do with the person pouring the gasoline. About half the brands did very well with the best possible rating of one. With nothing holding back the flow of fuel, the Stark, VP Racing, and Wavian are much more prone to fuel spills. Several of the brands advertise having a lower center of gravity and being less prone to tip over. So let's test the tip over angle next using an angle finder. And the gas cans are filled with five gallons of water. And the garage boss is tall and narrow, but the top portion of the can is tapered inward to help prevent tip over. And the garage boss actually did well at 34 degrees. And the scepter is short and wide with a small amount of taper at the top. It'll take up a little bit more floor space, but it's less likely to tip over at 39 degrees or about five degrees better than the garage boss. The Briggs and Stratton looks almost the same as the garage boss, but has a different Different fuel spout, 35 degrees, which is almost the same as the garage boss. And the Midwest is short and wide without much, if any, taper. And the Midwest performed about the same as the taller Briggs and Stratton at 35 degrees. And it didn't take much for the Scepter military style can to tip over. 25 degrees or about 10 degrees less than the other brands. And the no spill has a small amount of taper at the top of the can to help keep the lower center of gravity. And the no spill takes the lead at 40 degrees. And the VP Racing is sort of wide, but it's also pretty tall with a small amount of taper at the very top. 33 degrees for the VP Racing can. The bottom part of the Harbor Freight Midwest can is rounded, so the tall narrow profile is even more problematic. The tip over point is 19 degrees. And the tall narrow profile of the Stark didn't help. 20 degrees for the Stark. And the Eagle has a huge advantage being short, wide, and round. And the Eagle takes the lead from the no spill at almost 47 degrees. And the Sure can is pretty short and wide, but it has a small amount of taper at the very top. And the Sure can performed well at 38 degrees. And the Just Right is a little bit taller and not quite as wide as the Eagle. And the Just Right tipped over at 39 degrees. The Wavian is tall and narrow, just like the military-style Midwest can. Without the fuel spout attached, the Wavian tipped over at 20 degrees. If you're hauling fuel in the back of a vehicle or a trailer, the center of gravity could impact the tip-over point of the fuel can. If you're looking for a fuel can that won't tip over, the Eagle came out on top at 47 degrees. The No Spill performed well at 40, Scepter and Just Right, 39 degrees. Let's see which fuel cans remain upright in a moving vehicle. And the Garage Boss and the Scepter military plastic tank toppled over pretty easily. The Scepter and the Midwest are still standing. And the Midwest military, Stark, and the Wavian fuel cans all tipped over pretty easily. And the Scepter and the Midwest cans are still standing. And the next set of cans don't want to topple over. So I'll add some boards to keep them from sliding around. And the VP did well, but is finally out of the running. Only five gas cans left. And the Midwest and the Scepter are the next to go. And the Just Right just couldn't hold on any longer. And the No Spill lost his balance. It almost tipped over, so it's the Eagle for the win. The gas port in most vehicles are recessed by at least an inch or even more. So I put together a test stand to compare how well each of the gas cans perform fueling a vehicle. And the fuel spout design in the Garage Boss limits the ability to tip the fuel can upward and there's a lot of fuel left in the can. Subtracting the 2.7 pounds of weight of the can, there's still over 16 pounds of water, which is right at two gallons. For day-to-day -day use, it's a bit of a hassle to flip the gas can upside down, especially if you have to use your thumb to activate the fuel valve. So it can be done in an emergency, but let's just test the cans for normal use. And the fuel spout limits the angle that you can lift the can to dump the fuel. And the scepter can and the water combined weighs over 27 pounds, so almost 3 gallons of water. And the spout on the Briggs and Stratton allows the can to be tilted high enough to drain the fuel tank. And the Briggs and Stratton did very well with just a small amount of fuel inside the can. And the Midwest fuel spout has plenty of length and has a pretty good angle for fueling a vehicle. And the Midwest can is nearly empty. And the Scepter military fuel can is well designed for adding fuel to a vehicle. Just a small amount of water inside the can.
and the nose spill is not designed for refueling a vehicle and it really struggled in this test. Over three gallons of fuel are still inside the nose spill fuel can. The VP Racing is very well designed, no problems draining the fuel. And the Harbor Freight Midwest fuel can didn't have any problems draining the fuel. And the Stark is well designed for refueling a vehicle and the tank is drained. With the Eagle fuel can, the funnel angle was barely enough. And the Eagle can probably wouldn't work too well with some vehicles. And the Sure can offers a lot of flexibility and didn't have any issues. And the Just Right has a pretty long spout, which really helps. No problems draining the fuel can. Just like the Just Right, no issues with the Wavian fully draining. Let's take the testing to an all new level using Cousin Eddie's Farm of Ego. And the fuel cans took a swan dive from about 12 feet up. This is the Wavian knockoff, and this is the Wavian. As you can see, there's a lot of damage to the knockoff. The handle is destroyed, and there's a lot of dents on the can. Just a small dent in the Wavian. Unfortunately, the can from Harbor Freight did experience quite a bit of damage. Other than the spout, the military scepter can held up very well. The Midwest can held up well, but unfortunately, there's a lot of damage to the spout. Unfortunately, the scepter has sprung a leak. The handle's pretty loose on the just right, and there's also a lot of dents. The Eagle can experienced a lot of damage. The handle is torn off, and there's quite a few dents. And the VP Racing is still in great shape with no visible damage. The Shop Boss has a couple of pretty significant dents. And the shirt can held up just fine with no damage. And there's just one dent with a no spill, but other than that, the can is still in great shape. Since the military style cans are designed to be tough and durable, let's compare their performance. The Midwest and the Wavian's handles are fully welded and the Starks is just spot welded. And the Starks handle finally broke at 864 pounds and the spot welds held on. Let's test the Harbor Freight Midwest. And the Midwest handle finally broke at over 2,000 pounds. Very impressive. And the Wavian barely edges out the Midwest at 2,081 pounds. Let's place some weight on top of the cans and see how they hold up. And the Stark held up just fine at over 2,800 pounds. And the Harbor Freight's Midwest can is definitely capable of taking on more weight. No problems for the Wavian. Let's take a look inside the cans and then we'll test them for corrosion resistance. And the inside of the Stark fuel can is not painted and the metal does not appear to be galvanized. And the Midwest can is made of a lot thicker metal compared to the Stark. And the entire inside of the can is painted. Just like the Harbor Freight Midwest can, the metal inside of the Wavian is painted. Instead of using paint, the Just Right fuel can is constructed of galvanized metal. Just like the Just Right, the Eagle can is constructed of galvanized metal. I'll be using a hydrogen peroxide vinegar and salt mix, which is a very aggressive rusting agent, and we'll see which of these brands holds up the best. It's only been about an hour, and there's quite a bit of rust that's already formed with the Stark brand. There's no paint on the Stark brand, and it doesn't have any sort of corrosion inhibitor on it. And the galvanized metal with the Eagle held up really well. There's no rust. The Harbor Freight Midwest brand is still in great shape without any corrosion. The Wavian is still in great shape, no visible corrosion. The Just Right is still in great shape, no corrosion. Converting performance values into an A3F rating is subjective. However, it does make figuring out which gas can meet or fail to meet all the necessary requirements a lot easier. For example, the Wavian performs well in almost all categories, but it tips over easily in the back of a vehicle. Not a big deal if you don't mind securing the can to keep it from tipping over. On the other hand, the Just Right performed well in all categories, but it's a little bit heavier than the plastic cans. A big thank you to everyone that requested a video on fuel cans. I had a lot of fun testing them. A lot of people requested bringing back the Farmer Bego and Cousin Eddie, so thanks again for requesting that as well. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So I hope you'll take time to leave comments as well as leave video ideas. So thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.